So this is the best gaming TV in the world. The 77 inch LG G3 OLED, fantastic. But how do we make this even better? Well, Fancy LEDs sent me over their HDMI 2.1 Fancy Sync Box to improve our gaming experience. So here's the same LG G3 with the HDMI 2.1 Fancy Sync Box. You tell me, what do you think looks better? This or this? Now, I'm gonna get my family's opinion and game with them and have some fun with this, but first, let's see what's in the box and install it on the back of the TV. So here it is in the box, in the flesh. So of course, you're always gonna have a user manual and uh, you know a little bit of promo materials. So thank you for connecting with us. You can go online and get some help if you need that. And then you have the sync box. So this has, looks like a power button and a reset button on the top some information on the front and on the back it has an HDMI input and one output. Then we connect to the LED strips with the USB-C and we have a power connection here. And remember, this is a 2.1 box. So this is gonna work with your Xbox Series X, your PS5. Uh, it's not just gonna give you 60 Hertz, it will give you that 120 Hertz with VRR and ALLM, which is very important for gamers. So then we have the LEDs themselves here. This is actually a 6.125 meter length LED system and it has 48 lights per meter, so that's good to know. And then it does have this USB-C connection I was talking about. A lot of these used to be micro USB, so I'm, you know, of course it's nice that it has USB-C now. Better power, better consistency, so that's good. Then you have an HDMI 2.1 and you have a power box, which are both white intentionally so that they can kind of blend in with most walls. So I think that was pretty smart because once you get behind the TV, cabling can be a mess. So it's nice to just have something that blends in nicely with the wall. And then lastly, you have four of these little tracks to put around the edges of the TV which can be really useful because sometimes when you stick lights like this onto objects, they can come unstuck pretty easily. So to be able to connect this sticky material to the back and then stick this on there and then run the track around there, which kind of ramps up and gives you that nice corner, that should be very useful for the installation process. So uh, pretty straightforward. You got the lights, you got the box, you got some power and the HDMI and we're set to install this on the back of the TV. Okay, so we took the G3 off the wall. This has a very tight mount to the wall, so if I was to do this while it's up there, it'd be very hard for us to film it and even to, to get this done. So most of you guys can just leave it on the wall and do it. But I also got a couple of extras here. I got some of this Velcro brand industrial strength because I am gonna put this box right here somewhere on the wall, and this is very crucial because it's very strong and it helps me hold this onto the wall. And then I got some alcohol prep pads because I'm gonna wipe it down. A lot of your TVs are probably pretty old and dirty, so you might wanna do this in order for it to stick to the back of the TV best. So I'm just gonna go around the edges and clean it up. Then the next step is we need to take the double-sided tape, stick it to these brackets. Okay, now I'm gonna actually take the other side off and put each one of these pieces up on a corner of the TV so that the lights can track around in a nice uniform square or rectangular shape. Good thing I'm good at geometry here. That looks pretty good. Okay, then we have two choices for which way to go. I'm gonna go counterclockwise from the bottom right because all the HDMIs and power and everything is gonna be kind of over here. I don't want that one thing to be on that side of the TV. So we'll go down here from the right and we'll extend the lights up and around and end back here, which will give us the best outcome. I'm gonna set that up there for now. So I do actually like how they have these little connectors because it actually can bend it around. It looks like a little NASCAR track here where it angles the lights, whereas some of the other ones, you, you just have to round the corner yourself. So at least they've thought of making this edge a little bit easier to navigate. So I like that. I'm gonna curve it in here. All right, we'll cut it right here. Boom. And then we'll tuck this right in here. And not everyone's gonna have this little bend here. I chose to go around this and here. You could probably cut this piece off, 
But either way, I'm pretty happy with the fact that it ends up right where my starting point was. And now we can work on getting the HDMI 2.1 box connected to this next piece. I'm probably gonna go just like this because then the HDMIs will be facing in where I don't really need to mess with them much. And the LED uh, USB-C can connect. And then on the side of the TV, I'll still be able to see the lights and press the buttons if we put it this way. So I'll connect this up and then we'll plug in the HDMI that comes from the Xbox right here and we'll see how it looks. As I said, if you want it to stick forever, you can use this Velcro double-sided tape. Very good stuff. All right, we'll put this right about there. And then we have the USB-C power, which we can connect right here. And this goes output to the TV. So this is the output right there, and then it'll connect to the TV. And then luckily for us, we have a little bit of cord management right here. So we can run these cords through here a couple different times. Look at that, very easy and free cord management. I like it. So all we have left to do is hang the TV back up and connect the power and the HDMI coming from the Xbox. But on our wall here, we didn't run the wires inside the wall. We have the HDMI coming up and it, it covers it with this nice channel. And we're gonna run an extension cord up the wall. And then I'm actually gonna put another piece of double-sided Velcro on the back of the TV. And this will connect and plug in all of our stuff up here, the TV and the HDMI 2.1 box. If you had a power outlet up here, especially a recessed one, you could you know, plug this in and it would be out of your way. So our TV will have to sit off the wall a little bit because of this depth, but I think it's just gonna look cooler since it's nice to have the TV off the wall just a little bit so that the lights can shine nicely out anyway. So it's all gonna work out for us. We'll show you, but definitely in another video, I should put a power outlet and low voltage and run this in the wall, but we're not gonna do that today. So that was a little bit harder than your typical TV, again, because this mount is so tight to the wall. But I was able to use some of that double-sided tape to connect the uh, AC adapter of the actual HDMI 2.1 box to the TV and then connect the power cord for the TV to that as well. Plug that in to the box here, plug the HDMI into the back, and now we have it all pretty neat. You could stick a little bit of Velcro here and hold that in, but more or less, we got it where we want. You wanna make sure that you keep all of those cords inside the lights because if it's hanging outside the lights then it's gonna have a really like weird shadow coming up. So you don't want that. So we're good. All we have to do is plug it in, turn it on and see how this thing performs. Let's do it. Okay, we have it up and working. I wanna show you guys how cool it works with the family here and see how they like it. But first I wanna show you a little bit more about the app. So you can download that on the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store. It's just called Fancy LEDs, just like the name of the product. Once I downloaded it and connected to the box, it immediately connected to my Wi-Fi and found it and paired. Very straightforward, worked very nicely with the app to get it set up. And on the first page, it just has brightness. You can raise and lower the brightness. You can increase or decrease the diffusion modes, low, medium, or high, depending on how much action you want going on and the speed of the diffusion. But what I wanted to show you is some of the other cool settings that it has and some of the scenes and things. So I did tell you that I started on the bottom right side of the TV and went around counterclockwise. So make sure you go in the settings and have that connected correctly. Then you also have the scene mode CEC. So if you want the actual lights to turn off with the TV, make sure you have that engaged. And then it also has low, medium, or high saturation for the color on HDR Dolby Vision. Obviously, most people will probably pick high or medium just to have the coolest experience. Then, of course, if you want to just have some fun with it, there's a bunch of different scenes. You can connect to the rainbow, have all kinds of different colors. Got fire. Ooh, just like a campfire. Looks perfect. Calm. I think that's just a nice, clean background. And just a few more. So you have all kinds of different scenes that you guys can choose if you want. And then it also has a sound mode. So as you can see, it's reacting to my voice. So that's another opportunity if you don't wanna have it on any random pattern or scene or connected to the HDMI 2.1 uh, device that you have. You can just put it on sound mode. All right, so we were on the Xbox home screen. Now we're on the PS5 home screen. And I will tell you why in just a moment. But while we're here, I wanted to fire up a little YouTube TV because we will be watching some other content in this room, even though this is primarily a gaming room. So when we brought this up to see how it looks for watching movies and TV shows, 
We fired up a movie and as you can see, it looks pretty awesome. You get really reactive response around the edges and I think it gives a much more immersive experience when watching movies. I think a lot of times when you're watching TV in a dark room, it can be hard for your eyes to adjust. And I think with the HDMI 2.1 Fancy Sync Box, it provides that immersive experience and a little bit more comfort for your eyes, which is important if you're gonna be out here, whether it's gaming or watching movies for a long time. But let's do gaming now. Now the reason that we connected the PS5 is because I wanted to show you guys that this could definitely do 4K 120 with VRR, and the issue was is that having it connected to the Xbox, I wasn't able to visualize that as well as I could do it with the PS5. So we got this fired up, we put on Spider-Man 2, and now you can see when I turn on the game optimizer of the TV that it is showing 120 frames per second and it does show VRR functioning. So it really does what it says it can. And the Xbox Series X can do that as well. And, and we had it showing all the check marks. However, I just couldn't get it to visualize it while the game was actually playing and in 4K 120 with VRR, all that. I'm just not technologically advanced enough when it comes to gaming. So just take my word for it, it works with both. You can see it's working with the PS5 here, and I think it looks amazing. So now what we really need to do is bring the entire family in here and get their reactions on how they like the sync box. So I'm here to ask the family what they think about this, and right off the bat, Caesar groans at us. <laughs> but what do you guys think? Do you think this is pretty cool, the, the fancy LED 2.1 sync box? Yeah, it's pretty cool. Why do you think it's cool, Aiden? Because it tracks all the colors. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty reactive too. Like it's not messing around. Like it is like really good at tracking. We were looking at some of this stuff and it's like you turn left, turn right quickly and it just, it follows it perfectly. Much more reactive than some of the ones that are on camera that kind of delay a little bit. I think this is pretty awesome. And the fact that it can do 2.1, Aiden, so you hadn't even seen this game on 4K 120 before and we turned it on just so we could get the sync box to work and then you said it looks a lot more clear and better, doesn't it? Yeah. Jacoby, you having fun? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's pretty amazing. I love how it just adds like a little something extra, like really fancy is the right word because it does make, you know, a fancy situation here even fancier. Yeah, it is, this is literally, I think, the best gaming TV in the world. And I think it looks better with it. Now, Jen, we were talking about kids staring at these video games forever. Do you think that having this light around, it's going to help with the eye fatigue? Yeah, I think it maybe could. I feel like it kind of helps diffuse just a little bit. So yeah. I, I think that it can be really helpful for the eye fatigue. Now, I don't know if that's like an official thing, but it definitely seems to me like if you're going to be gaming in a dark room and you have a bright screen, if you has light around the outside, even if it's not as reactive as this, but even just a general nice soft light behind there, I think it's just going to help your eyes adjust to this. So definitely one benefit if you're going to be gaming 24-7, I guess, even oh, though... Oh gosh, hopefully not. <laughs> yeah, they don't really need to be gaming 24-7, but if you're gonna, you might as well have some backlights, right, Jacoby? Yes. And as we were talking before, you can also see that it has 120 or 119 frames per second and the VRR mode is on, which are features of the HDMI 2.1. So it's one thing to have the sync box and for it to be reactive, but it's another thing for it to work with HDMI 2.1, which is the top for gaming 4K 120 and all that for the PS5, Xbox Series X. So really cool that it can do it for the gaming and, and do it at this speed and with this kind of reactivity. Looks like some hooligans. Oh, wow. You stuck him down. Uh-oh, uh-oh, somebody's giving you the taser. Oh, oh no. Jacoby. Give it to your brother quick. Let him whoop some butt. And you guys, what's cool is I can have a bunch of different scenes so we can make it a pretty rainbow when Aiden's playing. What do you think, Jen? Oh, I think that'll definitely enhance his gameplay. Or how about fire? Ooh. Fire. Fire? What about fireworks? Ooh. Oh. I kind of like fire better. So I've never tried star. Star's pretty cool. Why is there a green star down there? That's kind of interesting. Change the color. Oh, rain. I want to see rain. Rain? Ooh. Ooh. It's like what we've had all. It's like sideways rain, just like in San yeah. Diego. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and also it's raining in the game. Here's Breathe. This is kind of like your typical, like, relaxing kind of thing. I guess it's more like. What's color? Color? It's just one color, so you can pick a color. We can go orange, pink. Blue, but really those are pretty cool. What do you guys think? Let's go back to the diffuse. What do you think, Jacoby? Do you like it being as reactive or should we slow the reactivity down a little slow bit? Slow it the slowest you can. Okay. Oh, that wouldn't be no, this is cool. Medium is good because that, whoa, oh, that was cool. <laughs> me getting hit was cool. Well, no, the, the cool redness around the outsides was pretty yeah. cool. Keep doing it, Aiden, keep doing it. Yeah. Keep losing. I'm kidding. Uh oh, watch out behind you. I'm gonna die. Don't. Oh, I almost just died there. Oh, 
Yeah. Why are there explosive spiders? I mean, when was the last time you hung out with, you know, people affected by symbiotes, you know? Yeah. Yesterday. Yeah. Yesterday. Yesterday? Yeah. I mean, middle school is pretty weird. It is. <laughs> Good job, Aiden. You did great. You saved the people. You did a great job. We got one more thing to check out, though, and then we're going to wrap this up. And that is to see how good movies look. Ooh, Ooh let's Ooh, do it. Bring it. But, anyways, what I wanted to show you guys is how cool it looks, even if there's widescreen movie on. So, we had the other one that had a camera on top of the TV. Did you guys like that one better or this one better? This one. Well, I mean, I think I this one's gone. this one's pretty cool, and also it doesn't matter if it has the widescreen bars because you can see it still mimics yeah. around the outside, so you you don't lose any effect if watching a widescreen movie. And this Guardians of the Galaxy intro is pretty hilarious. It's visually stunning, and I think that the lights add to it as well. So, for all the people that think, why would I get this sort of sync box or you know ambient lighting around my TV? I would have to say personally, I think it adds to the experience. What do you guys think? Yeah. I would have to agree. I think it definitely does. It's like, do you have to have it? Not necessarily, but does it make it really cool? Yeah, it does. What do you think, little guy? Yes. <laughs> A man of few words. <laughs> Any last comments, Aiden? No. Okay. That typical uh, middle school response. Caesar's got something to say. What do you got to say, Caesar? Yeah, do you, do you like it? Do you like it, Caesar? Is it awesome? Is it awesome? Yeah, that's what I, I thought. Caesar loves it. it. Let me know if you guys have any questions about the HDMI 2.1 Fancy Sync Box. And you can also find the links in the description for the products. I want to thank Fancy LEDs for sending this on over. And we'll see you guys in the next video.